Hi, I'm David Stein of Money for the Rest of Us. And in this video, I'm going to describe an asset class that many people don't understand. It's Mortgage Real Estate Investment Trusts, or Mortgage REITs. We're going to look at how they differ from Equity REITs, which is an asset class that many investors are familiar with. But with Mortgage REITs, completely different, although it has some of the same tax treatments. And we're going to look at how to invest in them. What are the options? What have the returns been? And how risky are they? Mortgage real estate investment trusts are indirect investment vehicles that invest in residential and commercial mortgages. A mortgage is a debt instrument that's used to, to lend on a house. So if you go and borrow some money to buy a house, that's a mortgage. Those mortgages are packed up into bonds or securities and then sold off. Mortgage REITs invest in those mortgage-backed securities. They, they invest in both residential as well as commercial mortgage-backed securities. Now, REITs get special tax treatment. 75% of a REIT's assets have to be invested in real estate, government securities, or cash. And about 75% of gross income also must be derived from their real estate activities. And here's the key, 90% of taxable income must be distributed to shareholders as dividends. So REITs, both equity REITs and mortgage REITs, have very high dividend rates. Here's a graphic of a mortgage REIT. You can see it's somewhat complicated where you have an investor that invests directly in a, a mortgage REIT, and the mortgage REIT is borrowing money from some type of money lender, and then they're investing in mortgage-backed securities. Now, these mortgage-backed securities come from a buyer that buys a house a property, and they borrow that money from a bank, and then that bank sells that mortgage to a mortgage-backed security issuer. There's also a mortgage servicer where the buyer of the home pays their, makes their payment to that mortgage servicer, and then that money flows to the mortgage-backed security issuer and then ultimately to the mortgage-backed security. Now, how does that differ from an equity REIT? An equity REIT is a REIT that owns property. So they actually own the buildings. Now, not, not the debt, but the actual building. So it could be apartment, it could be an office, it could be retail. And then investors that buy equity REITs then are invested in that essentially indirectly through the, in that commercial property. Where mortgage REITs, it's actually just a bond. And so it's a very, very different type of investment. Now, the issuers of mortgage-backed securities are Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Ginnie Mae, and these are agency of the U.S. government. Some are owned by the U.S. government and, and others aren't, but they buy up mortgages, package them up into a bond known as a mortgage-backed security. There's the mortgages that are in there have to meet certain qualifications, and they are guaranteed by the federal government, which is why their yields on those mortgage-backed securities tend to be low. There's also non-agency mortgage-backed securities that are issued by, by banks or other financial institutions that aren't guaranteed by the federal government. They get a little higher yield. A mortgage REIT is an example of a carry trade because the mortgage REIT is borrowing money and then and taking some of the equity from the mortgage REIT investors, and then they're buying those mortgage-backed securities. But they're highly leveraged because the yields on mortgage-backed securities are low, and they're low because they're guaranteed by the federal government. The mortgage REIT is using leverage, borrowing money so they can magnify that return, and it all works great if nothing happens. That's what a carry trade is, a trade where you earn some income as long as nothing bad happens. And we'll look at some of the bad things that can happen to mortgage REITs here in a minute. Now, mortgage REIT leverage is 10 times book value. So it's, it's a huge amount of leverage. And their main source of leverage are something known as repurchase agreements. The mortgage REIT uses those mortgage-backed securities as collateral for their lending, very short term. They borrow money, they use that that mortgage-backed security is collateral, and then they get that collateral back. There's a little bit of a yield embedded. That's their main source of leverage. Very, very low-cost leverage, and as a result of this, this use of debt, 
magnifying the return, the dividend yield for mortgage REITs is often more than 10%. What are some of the risks for mortgage REITs? Because if we're going to invest in an asset class, we have to know what could go wrong. Let's take a look. Well, one risk is net interest margin risk, which is really just the risk that the idea that the spread or the differential between what the mortgage REIT is earning on their assets versus what they have to pay in terms of the debt. That spread is known as the net interest margin. And if for some reason the cost of their debt, these repo agreements go up significantly like they did in September 2019, that means their spread narrows, which means their profits plummet, which means they can't pay as high a dividend. So often the mortgage REITs will hedge or protect against that net interest margin widening. And when these risks occur, as I mentioned, the, the profits can fall. The book value can decline and dividends can be cut. Now with mortgage REITs, there, there's pricing risk. Because they're bonds, if interests go up, the price of the mortgage-backed securities can fall. And that can lead to a fall in a book value and potentially a dividend cut. There's also prepayment risk. If you have a mortgage, you have the option of paying that mortgage off early. If that happens and that mortgage is taken out of that mortgage-backed security pool, whoever owned that mortgage-backed security is no longer getting that interest payment because it's not part of the pool. But here's the thing. Mortgage holders are more likely to refinance their mortgage when interest rates fall. And the way that bonds work is interest rates fall, the price of the bonds goes up. But as a mortgage holder, when you refinance that mortgage, you're going to refinance whatever's owed on the mortgage. You don't care about the price of the mortgage-backed security that that mortgage is part of. But the mortgage REIT does because they only get back par value or whatever the value of that mortgage is, even though the value of the bond might be up. And so oftentimes when there are refinancings, the mortgage REIT loses money and then they don't like to lose money, obviously. So let's look at what the impact of some of these risks are on the actual performance of mortgage REITs. Well, as an owner of mortgage REITs, the prices can fall. And in the worst case scenario, they have fallen 57% to 66% and taken eight years to recover. And the dividends can be cut. because So while the, the yield, the dividend yield can be 9, 10%, 11%, if the dividend is cut, the mortgage REIT falls in price, which lowers your return. Now, the driver of those returns is, as I mentioned, the dividend yield. And is that dividend growing or fluctuating over time? And then whether investors will, are changing what they're willing to pay for mortgage REITs. In other words, are they willing to pay more for them? And so the price goes up. Are willing to pay less? And that is going to be a function of whether the dividends are increasing or whether they've been cut. On average, if we go back the past 20 years, dividend yields for mortgage REITs have been about 11.5%. But the average return's only been 6.2%, which shows the impact of falling prices and the dividend being cut. The lowest 10-year return, as we go back through the history of mortgage REITs, is negative 3.6% annualized. The lowest 20-year return's been 2.8%. And then, as I mentioned, the average is about 6.2 to 6.4%. How do we invest in mortgage REITs? Well, we can invest in individual mortgage REITs like Annaly Capital Management, NLY. AGNC is another very large mortgage REIT. We can invest in their common stock. Combined, they make up about 30% of the mortgage REIT market. We can also invest in the preferred shares of mortgage REITs. This is something that, that I do. I own and have owned for a number of years the preferred shares of mortgage REITs, so preferred stock shares. And they yield about 6 to 6.5%. Six but they don't have the huge volatility risk that you see with the common stock of mortgage REITs. These preferred stocks aren't going to fall 
60%. They may fall 30%, and they definitely have done that. But as the price falls 30%, the yields go up on these preferred stocks. So that's the way that I have preferred to invest in mortgage REITs, in the mortgage REITs preferred stocks. The other way that we can invest in mortgage REITs is through an ETF, an exchange traded fund. The iShares Mortgage Real Estate ETF, REM, is a way to go and invest in mortgage REITs. Now, I've covered a lot in this video, believe me. And on my website at moneyfortherestofus.com, I have a very comprehensive investment guide on mortgage REITs. What are they? How they're taxed? I have some of the graphics that we've shared in this video. Who issues them? You'll be able to get a better idea if you prefer to read about mortgage REITs, and you can find that at moneyfortherestofus.com, where way at the top of the website, there's a section called Guides, and you can see it right there, Mortgage REIT Investing. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been a while since I've posted a video on YouTube. You can see I'm still working out the kinks here. But if you like the video, go ahead and like it. Subscribe to my channel. I'll be issuing or releasing more videos in 2021, trying to figure out the technology. You can also listen to my podcast, as well as check out a lot of the written content at moneyfortherestofus.com. Thanks.